Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wheel of Time, Season 2. As I said on my first podcast for Season 1, I enjoyed the show. I am comparing it in a way to The Rings of Power in my mind. And there's a clear distinction between The Wheel of Time trying to make a good story and have it play out close to the books and doing what they can to fit it in and make it a good TV show. The Rings of Power, I think, is spectacle and the people don't really care too much. I'm not talking about enjoyment factor for that matter because I love The Wheel of Time, if that's the quick and end of this. There's, I am intrigued. I am waiting episode by episode. There's cast members I'm not happy with the casting, but they win me over. And that's rare for a show. And this could be a, you know, a love of the novels. I say up to book 10, um, a huge fan. And then. Um, not, and it's not really anybody's fault. The author passed away and he handed it over and they finished it. I finished the whole series, but the end doesn't captivate me in the sense that I wanted it to. So it's a little disappointing, but huge fan of the, you know, first series of novels really incorporated a lot into some of my Dungeons and Dragons as a dungeon master, but with other franchise type fantasy settings i've done the same and i've often discussed that if i had to pick one i would say the shannara series is the best better than lord of the rings wheel of time uh sort of truth things that uh speaking of the legend of the seeker that tv show i loved it and it brutalized what it was do doing in the book but it kind of tried to have fun and fit tv you all can't be Game of Thrones, and I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm more happy with th this balance it's trying to achieve. So, The Wheel of Time Season 2, for me, is an improvement. I love the show. It's not a great show in technical terms as a critic, but with my love of the novels and the lore, I think it's winning me over. And there's a casting change, too. I think they changed Matt. Um, so it's based on Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, who took over. Um, it's developed by Rafe Judikins, uh, Judkins. And I love Rosamund Pike, Daniel Henney. I think they really captivate the characters. I'm so happy with them. And the show has a way of letting you see people vulnerable. And you don't have to have makeup on in every scene, even though the woman's beautiful, uh, or even different aspects of different characters on the show. They show them dirty, hungry, tortured, just great from the casting. And here's what I said from the beginning. There's casting choices I don't like at all, but they win me over as the season's going on good actors with presence they'll grow they get they seem to get better and that's all i could hope for in the sense where i really enjoyed game of thrones probably up to season three but i was rolling my eyes all the time i am interested in episode to episode i want to know how it's going to be connected uh how the characters will differ or adhere to the novels and the you know actual lore but that's the main thing for me. I watch Rings of Power. I don't care episode to episode. I might be having fun watching Galadriel with a fucking sword. Although I haven't finished season two. There's an aspect of fun and spectacle I'm happy with. And I'll enjoy something. And I was having a discussion with my friend who knows nothing about Tolkien's books. He's watched Lord of the Rings. So he notices a couple of things. But for him, it's just a, a fun show let's say me i'm going to be a little more critical but when i look at the wheel of time i see effort and care and love 
it's almost as if um you know someone knows the limitations they have with telling a story with this well you got to remember this law this fantasy series some of the books are like 900 pages over a thousand pretty wordy in the sense and it is insanely difficult i can't even see in the day and age of 22 episode seasons nailing it down but you'd have a better chance and that's what i would hope would be done for these to be honest i um i harking back to the days of watching one of my favorite shows ever buffy the vampire slayer and yeah the first season was like 12 or 16 episodes and each season after was 22 you know and that was the, the the trend and that was the goal of shows and you had amazing emmy award-winning episodes and you had some flops that didn't really carry on but it gave the world a rich foundation and i think that's what this show is trying to do you go through these episodes and there's not a lot of um spectacle in your face you know on a consistent basis where you're you know absorbing all this information and it's oh what's going on on the screen i'm so happy that they decided to go with real good storytelling and well for me you know again i'm not saying it's a you know an amazingly done show on all fronts but it's enough to captivate me keep me interested um i was even worried about the guy who's playing rand and he he's won me over now celine playing um a uh, land fair i'm sorry is one of my favorites and i'm so happy they included her much differently you know they, they're not going exactly like the book and i'm surprised that i'm okay with it that i actually can enjoy something that doesn't adhere to the books and the law but is at least trying and making a good effort ah oh. What is her name? Uh, I think it's Natasha O'Keefe. She's knocking it out of the park. I'm a little eh on Ishmael, but again, they win me over. I guess if, if in my perception, good writing, decent writing, care, love will win in the end. You can have, you know, new actors who don't have such a presence and they can grow into their own. And it feels like this show is giving that effort. I'm going to give it credit for that. Again, on on the fanboy side, I love the show. Week to week, episode to episode, I want to know what's happening. I'm excited, happy. Even when they stray from things, I'm okay with it. I can't get that from a lot of the shows. Halo is annoying in that sense. Um, well, I mentioned the Rings of Power. And I can go back and enjoy some of the old Xena episodes, even some of the God awful Hercules show. But when you're having fun and you're putting it on your screen and it seems like the actors are doing their job and going along with it and, you know, hamming it up sometimes, I can enjoy that. And this show has a balance of that. And I think it works well. Um, you have a lot again if you have a lot of stuff to cover 900 pages per book and i think i'm lowballing it because you got the appendixes and you gotta fucking pronounce people's names this robert jordan went off on a lot of this stuff some say a, a good successor to tolkien in that sense but i can't tell you how excited i get and i'm smiling and i'm i teared up at a point like and again, this isn't even my favorite fantasy setting. And they ruin, kind of ruined that with the Shinar TV show, although I gave it a shot. And they seemed to care and try, but you just couldn't produce what they needed to. Not on fucking MTV, anyway. So, season one is eight episodes. And season two is eight. I am praying that it gets expanded and is like, you know, give me 16 for episode three. There's so much to go through, but given that the first book ends at the eye of the world and they are making the connection that rain thinks he kills the dark one or whatever he lets him loose and season two ends with the 
dragon um, proclaiming Rain as the Dragon Reborn sort of thing, and the uh, Senchan or uh, Invaders coming, I was impressed. Like, you're going to try to wrap it up. You're going to try to fit eight episodes into these 900, 1200 page books. Fucking good on you for trying. This is an effort worthy of watching, of praising. I don't care. You know, I get it. Some people might, you know, get annoyed. And I'm all for that. Like, I'm on the side of people who are like, you know, the rings of power. Why are you making the rings out of order? Why are you making this important to them when it didn't seem like it was? You're trying to do your own thing and put your own mark on it. Regardless of enjoying, you know, a season of fun stuff, I think this is a much better show. I think it's caring, trying hard. It's got some episodes that really delve into characterization. And then you've got episodes with magic. And I mean, real sort of magic, not bullshit. Uh, you shall not pass and... Um, you know, things that never work for me as a Dungeons and Dragons fan, even in Dungeons and Dragons movies. This is showing how the channel is weave the magic, and I fucking love it. Yeah, special effects could be a little bit more on point, but it can get better. It is a show that seems to know how to take uh, budget and where to put it, so... I have trust in it, and I'm never disappointed in totally. I can't even think of something that made me go, ugh, like, roll my eyes. Magic in the water with the fucking land and the sword forms. They even hinted at that, too. Um, when Rand sees the Amaralyn and yielding. Like, this is getting into stuff that you can't, no one else does well. Even Gandalf and Sauron's uh, fight in the tower was like pointing their staffs at each other. And, you know, okay, so we know telekinesis and his rare moments of things. We might get Galadriel more in The Hobbit. But not in the foundation of how they work and how they're applied. This is describing weaving magic in earth, fire, this and that. And there are objects they've already shown... Uh, you know, from the books, uh, Terran Grill, and oh, it's just awesome. Again, it's not perfect. It's not probably the best show ever made, but fuck, I love this show. It hits me in the feels. It captivates me episode to episode. Characters that I thought were bad casting start to win me over because the writing is decent to very good for me. I like what they're trying to do. There are moments of weakness in characters and vulnerability. No makeup, dirty, fucking in pain, happy, sad. The right way to do flashbacks for fucking God's sakes. It's like a tiny little thing to clear up or point out where Moraine uh, love for the, you know, Amaralyn or whatever they're pronouncing things. So I can't say there's a bad episode in this season in the sense that it becomes one big story for me and when i go back to my dvd collection and i look at the huge fucking massive space that takes up all my buffies uh, x files to me these seasons are like huge novel series like they have a cohesive story you can have independent episodes that have nothing to do with the main thing but through the foundation and the threading through subplots and you can feel it and it becomes something comfortable and familiar and this show has got it all for me i, I want to keep raving about this and and but if you go through the episodes again i can't you know and i just finished the season again i don't think i could pick out stuff that really you know annoys me except for some bad casting that eventually did win me over so good writing well for me again i know everything could be taken apart and this could be just a um pretty good show for people but for me it is nailing it um I, i'm captivated the subplot of landfare with 
win is actually interesting. And when they try to resolve that going on with all these other characters that are doing separate things, it is an achievement that makes me so happy. Rand is in a relationship with one of the Forsaken. <laughs> if you know about this, if you don't, well, you have to learn. I don't give too many plugs, plots and stuff like that, but this is one of the evil people from you know, thousands of years old with the one with the power and working for the dark one. And she had a history with the person Rand is the reincarnation of or the dragon reborn. What do they call me here? Louis Theron. I'm not sure if they changed it to Arthur. No, no, he was just a guy who the Senchan come from. Uh, anyway, getting into the deep dives and the weeds of this is insane because I am so surprised that they're trying to do all this and doing it really good. He's in a relationship with this evil chick who eventually, uh, I don't know if she gets, she gives herself away a lot, but when it is revealed who she actually is. It is fucking awesome. And her attitude, her the actress is just nailing it for me. And they show at the end of the season, the other ones, cause part of the story is thousands of years ago, the heroes of the age, Ace of Died, men and women, um, stop the plot to bring the dark one the evilest evil entity whatever into the world and many of the Aes Sedai betrayed them they sealed them away they were forsaken and Ishmael who gets freed in the first season when they think they kills but it's, a, it's part of the plot um you find out at the end of this season spoiler that um he released them all or most of them and one of them reveals herself to uh, Lanfear. I think it's Mohegan. I don't know how you pronounce these fucking names. You got to go back into the appendix. Holy shit. She's fucking ruthless, evil. Lanfear throughout the season is showing depth as a character, as a villain. Rand is confused, young fucking farmer guy who's starting to realize, you know, his power and his fear of going insane. Because the Dark One touched the male part of the source where they draw their magic from, and he tainted it. So men, if they continue to channel magic, will eventually go insane. And they have the um, character here. They use Loghain, uh Again, they're not doing everything the same as the book, but <clears throat> I am fucking loving it. Um, season 2, again, is going to end with the... Um, some really good battles uh character growth you, you, you know part of the wonder of the books is showing these people come from certain walks of life and they almost be have a a regal aspect to them and in the books it's more like oh well yeah the the let's call it the shire you know giving them my quotes that in olden times, that was one of the most powerful, uh, more, you know, helpful people and, you know, the breaking of the world in the, in the war, three, whatever, a thousand years ago, changed things and, you know, where there's simple farmer folk, their bloodline is like royalty or, you know, it's fascinating done in the books and it's done great here for just what it needs to be. Again, yes, I would like 22 episodes. I would like insane character depth, just like the books. Do it really close to it. But if I got a place like Amazon and it says, oh, you know, we're going to try this adaption. I am fucking loving it and I'm having a ball. Um, I can't say the same for things like the Rings of Power or when I watched Halo. You know, you even know some of the new Star Wars. It seems like they're looking for... Uh, a money maker, a money generator, a franchise, and I don't think any, again, I've said this in some podcasts, but I don't believe people set out to make bad shit. 
unless it's like IP, you know, company wants to keep the IP for like fucking Hellraiser and they, they give somebody a hundred thousand dollars to make a bullshit movie. I think the Fantastic Four, Roger Corman, it, it can be done in a sense, but no, I don't think the people at the Rings of Power are fucking mustache twirling villains trying to fucking piss off the Tolkien fanatics that are really into everything and want things done more towards the books, which I agree with. I would like that. But I think in the long run for any type of media like this, if it's done well, people forgive it. If the Rings of Power was an actually great show and had even decent for me, writing, pacing, you know, um, trying and caring about the lore and keeping it moving and fleshing out the characters, you know, I, I know it would be uh, accepted greatly, widely, all over the place, which is basically getting shit on, from what I remember. I basically do these podcasts and then... I'll go and look at some of my favorite and some of the people I don't like their reviews, their ideas, get, you know, then I'll start paying attention to thumbnails and articles, that type thing. And season one of Rings of Power was a fucking disaster from almost every aspect, forgetting about just sitting here and joining the show going, you know, I don't give a fuck. I love it. Fine. But from the fans and the lore and the credit, the critics, it's just, it's a different beast to me. I think when you can see through this show, it's shortcomings, it's failings, it's striving to do better is clear. It's striving to keep the lore and keep the familiarity with the characters for the fans and deciding on how we're going to make it fit in an eight episode season. It, it almost blows my mind how good they're doing it and then folding it together but huge things are taken out um the things what they did with the shinarians and the blowing the horn of valir it's it's insane and not what you i would envision them doing and changing one of the main characters matt didn't impact me at all, except for in the beginning, I'm like, I'm, I, this isn't the same actor, because I, I try not to look at things, so I didn't know, um, you know, season two had a change in casting or whatever. But you know, as soon as I start watching it, I start noticing it, and <clears throat> whether for good or bad for the actor, I'm not sure. I think I was happy with the first actor. This one's nailing it for me. Um, Matt with the dagger and Peyton Fane, which is. The character that kind of bothers me only because he, I keep seeing him from Halo, I think. He's the, um, he's like a refugee in rubble or something that's in a, not a cell, but he's a little crazy. He was kidnapped by the aliens to find artifacts. It's a crazy scene and I didn't like that performance, but here are a lot of things, the white cloaks, I mean, <laughs> Again, you're talking about 900 pages, some some or more. I mean, I, I wish it, I packed everything away because I was getting my apartment done. But I would be able to look up at the bookcase and see, you know, huge fucking books. One of them was breaking apart. It's so big. And this show is trying to do it. Lord of the Rings has nothing on this. I mean... Go and watch this, the Cimmerillion, get all your unfinished tales, all of it. And as much as I love it, again, I think the Shinar is my favorite, but, you know, Tolkien, Lord of the Rings is fucking amazing, and it's pure magic to me in that sense. The Wheel of Time is fucking insane. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Right? Just... Let's keep it an average from what I'm saying. 900 pages. So it's, a, I know I really love the first seven to nine. So that's like, think of the pages. It's just incredible. You can't get that. 
from almost anything else. Maybe Shannara, because so many books, even though they're 300 pages, there's lots of them. And that connective tissue, I love. I should do, maybe I should do book series, podcasts. I haven't done that. I can make a new section. In any case, The Wheel of Time Season 2, it's just captivating me. I'm falling in love with it more and more. The more I watch it, um, the more I'm surprised about my own misgivings about the show and its casting and it has as it happens in front of me. You know, I used to be a little confused back in the day with comic books. I've been collecting comics since I was given one when I was a fucking infant, probably. And <clears throat> growing up, I always had this thing like, oh, well, these artists knew how to draw like, draw like this. Why in the 60s and 70s do they look different? And what is a good comic? Is it, do I want to read it or do I want to see good art? And I think I started realizing that if I'm reading a comic book and the art is bad, sometimes the writing can't help it, but it does help. Now, it's not the same to make that connection, but whether I'm perceiving it wrong or all these people just fucking money hungry fucking pricks. I think the actress playing Moraine is amazing. Um, Lan, uh, the performances grow, the characters develop. And I can't tell you how refreshing it is to see people without makeup, uh, dirty, hungry, happy, sad. And it doesn't impact, you know, I think I watched, it's just a stupid connection, but I, I was watching fucking the Saw movies, and one of the traps, I think it was, is it fucking Saw 3? The guy's in the trap, and he's in the goo, and this pig slurry shit is drowning him, and the guy who's the main, you know, guy's going through the trap saves him, and then they cut the scene, and he's clean. I think he's wet. It, it just, little things like that, you know, back in the day when you see people get out of the ocean or the water and their hair is dry, you know, it didn't, it doesn't, didn't matter. And it starts to matter when the dialogue is shit, when the casting is bad, and the settings look cheap. Now, this show isn't um, innocent from that. I mean, at times it does look a little small and um, scale, but... I think there's an improvement showing. I think there's a growth. There's a commitment to characterization and arcs for fucking characters. Multiple ones. I know it would be insane and it's not going to be whatever. But I would say this is way better than Game of Thrones. Now, bias, sure, I'm a fucking human. But I don't like the novels, The Song of Ice and Fire. I don't fucking like them. And up to, I think I'm actually, because he doesn't make the fucking books, right? He, he takes a while to write them. I think I'm current. Like, it's been a while since I read those books, but well, let's say I'm one book behind, whatever. I don't fucking like them. And I'm of the mind that the Game of Thrones show is way better than the fucking books. This is not the case with this. But for an adaption for trying to make it for the fans for the you know let's say the amateur the network right what they want what they expect the you know people got to get numbers viewers there's love intrigue um humor and it seems to be done at good times it seems to develop really well for me and i'm still surprised that I see a character go, and I go, well, that's not who I envisioned from the book. And I, I'm just shut off from it. And then I realize that person, it, they went through, they, I, I care. Like, that is, I, and not that's enough praise for the show. And the show is, you know, I would hope that the show would get it, its budget increased, its viewership, a commitment. Do all fucking nine seasons. I'll be the happiest fucking kid in the world. And I mean, kid, these books are a joy to me, you know, growing up. Even the, um, see, I keep thinking of the show Legend of the Seeker. 
But I think it's based on the Sword of Truth novels, whatever the fuck his name is, I forget. Um, I'm a big fan of all these fantasy series, especially the Dragonlance, the Forgotten Realms. Let's not forget Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman with the Dragonlance and Ari Salvatore and all those fucking amazing um, writers that wrote those books that connected the D&D worlds or AD&D worlds. They're fucking amazing and hold a special place in my heart. However, the Shannara series, Tolkien, Wheel of Time, these really stand out. And I know I'm not putting in like some sci-fi things that I truly love that I will put in there as critically good and whatever. But I don't think there's bad critics about the Wheel of Time novels, except maybe a consensus that, you know, it's a shame that the writer died and he was taken over. Not that it became shitty quality, but it wasn't, didn't fit what we saw coming in our minds. And that is one of the challenges with a show, right? I keep seeing characters introduced that I know from the books and I go, that's not her. That's not him. And it, it totally fucks with my brain and almost it annoys me because, you know, I want to see a character cast as this. And well, Celine slash Landfair was fucking awesome. It was just this is fucking awesome from the beginning. But there are other characters, and the reason why I'm not mentioning them is because they grew on me. Like, it didn't matter anymore. I was actually invested. I cared about the character. There's some great horror TV shows people have loved over the years, and I think when it comes down to it, in this type of medium, you know, television, movies, writing is king if you don't got a good script if you don't have enough characterization and believability i mean i'm watching a show where people are using portal gates weaving magic from the air one of the forsaken cuts moraine off from the from magic from the source and for the whole season basically she can't use her abilities and she's it's called still because it's happened in history where someone will take the power away from your connection away, you'll never have it again, or they you burn it out of yourself, you can burn yourself out. And this is actually some great D&D stuff. Uh, second edition uh, options and spells, and there's a section for channelers, and it's amazing because I use it for a lot of characters, and it's basically sort of what like they consider racing to be from Dungeons and Dragons, and wow, I'm getting off the track here, but it's because I love fantasy so much. It's because I grew up reading the Lord of the Rings books, The Hobbit, all the Dragonlance books, which I can't give enough praise for. Um, Forgotten Realms, uh, even the Legend of the Seeker books, all the Sword of Truth. I've tried everything. Uh, it's just so much out there so much is good so much is feared being adapted and i've got that trigger that little hesitation when lord of the rings rings of power came out and the first season came by and i was surprised because regardless of the enjoyment fact i'm someone who says i liked green lantern fucking movie okay fuck off i don't care i watch it way more than it probably should you have fun i want to see a green lantern on screen so i settle for it no i would want a better one made of course and that's what i get from rings of power it's not the fun fact that we're going through this season it's looking at a badly written show uh, much like the acolyte um changing things you know you fit in the format of tv and i don't think they're doing it well now any of these shows can pull it out and become fucking amazing. The opposite of Game of Thrones, right? Because Game of Thrones caught my attention. Then they started just fucking annoying me. And I did watch everything. And it's fucking shit's the bed at the end. And look at some of the shows that would never have been given a chance. I say this all the time. Buffy. How many fucking seasons? The first season was short. It spawned Angel. So many 
characters done well, interactions. This show seems to have that, and whether it's amazing on a critic level for people who do this way better than me and whatever, I can try to get that angle, but that fanboy in me that wants to love this or the superhero shows, again, I'll fucking watch She-Hulk again. I fucking loved it, but I'm not going to defend it as a great fucking show. I will defend the show to a certain extent. I think the effort is there. It's put on the screen. This actress is amazing, in my opinion, and lots of things she does. Uh, Rosamund Pike, I think her name is. And wow, a fucking old school fucking fantasy series done right, in my opinion. Now, of course, things could be better. This, you can't be the first Lord of the Rings trilogy, perhaps the greatest trilogy in film history. You know, Two Towers, Return of the King. Holy shit. And they're fucking long and they're fucking spaced and paced and. Even my com comp complaints here with there's no real magic in Lord of the Rings in the sense I feel it in, in this and this can get even better. It can, um, I think it has the potential to really impress and blow people out of their minds. A fucking, um, blockbuster show, I'm not sure. It's a very... It's very character rich and trying to pay attention to the law. And I think that can get away from people, which is why I think Game of Thrones was much better than the books and was as popular and successful as it was. You know, I can't deny that. And the fucking, what impressive actors they had in that show. Uh, and their shitty fighting, shitty special effects improved. And I think this has that potential. It just... Oh man, so excited. Hit me in the feels multiple times. Ah, oh, fucking Rosamund Pike. Uh, what do I know of her? Ma I think I've seen her in like the Doom movie, like a horror movie. But it's not like I'm fanboying over anybody in this show that is like, oh shit. Like, I think the one thing I fanboyed out on with Game of Thrones was like, oh my god, that's Dr. Bashir from fucking. So, um, Deep Space Nine. So that shows you my geekness. But you can't argue Game of Thrones' greatness in that aspect. I mean, Lannister, and seriously. It's just fucking amazing acting and portrayals. It went to shit and didn't hold up. I think this is growing. It's getting stronger. It's a fantasy series about the coming of a reincarnated, prophesized being... Uh, called the Dragon Reborn. He'll wield the power. He has the power to destroy it and save it. It's kind of classic. And yes, it does pay homage to a lot of the tropes and uh, familiar trappings of fantasy settings. And I love it. You've got the main, let's call them characters. And an amazing sub character. I don't know what you call them. They all have aspects that grow and shine. It's kind of an accomplishment, I think. And some might think it's a drawback. Yeah, like, oh, let's keep going with the naive and where the fuck was she? And uh, when she went through the arches. And so, yeah, you can do three episodes in that. <laughs> um, well, look at Supernatural. A fucking first season or two. I can't, some friends can't get through it, but it eventually becomes. One of the most fun, enjoyable rides, you know, on ever in television. And was it 10, 14 seasons? Who the fuck knows? I wish this gets that chance. I give it all the fucking praise I can with a, you know, an understanding that it's not perfect. It has flaws. But for a fanboy geek like me, it wins me over. I would say it's way better than rings of power um i can almost understand where lord of the rings fans find it insulting where i think real time fans would just be disappointed and potentially won over 
if you give it a chance. And if that's a difference um, that matters to people, then I am so fucking... I'm so happy with this fucking show. I don't want it to end. I, uh, episode to episode, I'm fucking caring. I'm thinking. I'm connecting it to books and how they change it. What is good? Is it better? Is it worse? Oh, and they do a decent time with the Trollocs and the villains. Like I said, this isn't a huge spectacle. You got fucking invaders come out of nowhere, fucking the whole plot up, and you're like, what? Wait, hold on. It's the Forsaken. He's awakened Landfair. Child's Night or whatever. She's posing as Selene. They're going to try to convert Rand because the Dark One wants his power, wants to corrupt him. And then yeah, they're manipulating his friends, Matt and Perrin, or trying to. And then it's the women from... Um, what is it, fucking Emmonsfield, or whatever fucking the Shire, and they're coming into their power. It's all over the fucking place. It's only got eight episodes, and I am fucking gonna give it praise for trying and being successful enough for me that I am fucking riveted with the episodes, and even the slower part. It's not throwing armies at you every second, but you see the potential. You see these fucking invaders coming fucking chain the fucking women who can channel and use the power it's it's got enough of the seriousness the stakes feel real uh the fear the hesitation from the supposed hero protagonist um you know his falling into the fucking sway of Celine Lanfair I want to see more of it. I want to see a lot more of it. And man, I want to watch more stuff with Rosamund Pike in it. <laughs> Just why have I not? Again, is it a horror movie? And I think it's a Doom movie where she plays like the fucking assistant. But it seems like she's so good as an actress and given such direction that I find it so believable. Her, you know, her moments of confidence or, uh, I don't know, um, no, it was, yeah, it was Gone Girl or whatever. Um, the moments of confidence or weakness and they feel real. And fucking land her water, the warrior guy. He has a plot and he has a character arc. Like, <laughs> do you have any fucking characters that is? I mean, I don't know if anybody really he knows the depth of it. It's insane. We've got more rain. You've got land. You've got Nynaeve. You've got Iguin, Rand, Perrin, Matt. Leandrin, who's fucking awesome. Man, she fucking is. She nails it. She's got the fucking look. Maybe the best casting on it. Um, And then they bring in Loyal, who, by the way, they put in a fucking troll guy. It looks so silly. It's fucking amazing that I actually care about the fucking character. I... I uh, loyal, yeah, that's what his, um, shit, an old gear, that's what they call them. Man, and you've got people who are coming into the show, like Min, uh, Avienda. He's fucking huge! And that's just, like, part of the main character. You got Logan and Ishmael and fucking Lanfear. It's... You know, it's got connections to fucking uh, an invading force, the Senchan, and they come out of fucking nowhere, and it happens just like the book, in that sense. Oh, man, just fucking awesome. I want to fucking gush over this, but there is a part of me that sees a lot of the flaws, you know, where it needs to improve. Um... You've got a lot of side shit going on. 
and some of it is great and some is just a little lacking i mean you got these fucking waters and other ace that die and they're doing it i'm fucking happy and enjoying myself once in a while a couple of things come up but man not a not an issue for me and the geekness the fanboy whatever it is that lets it go by give me more give me a lot more uh fan of the books up to the end and ish and so far a huge fan of the series the wheel of time um totally recommend it i think it's at the very least trying caring and doing what it can maybe the best it can with room for improvement without a doubt but man i love it so watch it if you've seen season one i'm sure you have your own idea i think for the most part for me it's like three episodes i'm i sort of biasly make up my mind but i'll watch it for the hell of it so if you watch season one i think you'll love season two it's got enough again fucking magic like displaying it explaining it like simple terms and you just name like nine fucking main characters and yes they're smart to group these three up but it's so it feels like it's eight episodes before they get these three guys together but the whole season's only three or eight episodes and in my opinion impressive watch it wheel of time season two those are my thoughts hope everybody's doing well till next time take care